I'm asking you about no, China I, 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 in the sense I, that you I, were I saying for decades. I would say, yeah, I, I wouldn't say in any gloating sense justified. It's just that it, I think it does confirm the uh, reservations that I've expressed, always with great respect for China as a development story. It's a fantastic a story of a country bootstrapping itself up and pulling hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. But the idea that it was about to take over the world and be the most powerful country in the world and, and rise and rise without any fluctuations was always nonsense. And there were always incoherencies in the figures and statements that they made. And, and they're trying to sort it out. But it, it, it gives the appearance, I don't want to put on the airs of knowing more about China than I do, but when a regime like that, which is essentially still largely a command economy and it's not a democratic society, when they institute a free stock market to presumably get the money out from under the mattresses, and then it behaves like a free stock market, and they then try to suppress it as a free stock market uh, and, and require that uh, half of what anyone sold in the last six months has to be reinvested immediately and this sort of thing, it ceases to be a free stock market. And I don't think you can address that kind of problem no. in that way. A lot, what a lot of people have said is that the Chinese economy, whatever it is, is completely separate from the Chinese stock market, and we shouldn't really even link the two in the same way that we would uh, in North America. But as someone who ran a business responsible for a business, there's still a lot of tech and media people that I speak with who say, okay, maybe some of the data is fabricated, but we still want a presence in China for the mere re reason of just size and scope. It's a big place, and if you have a business that works, even for a small percentage of the population, it's going to work. I certainly wouldn't recommend that people avoid it. It's a terribly important uh, jurisdiction, but can, if you can trust the jurisdiction, there are lots of stories, reliable stories, of people who feel, who've invested there and feel they haven't been treated fairly. Now, I'm not an expert in that subject, but if you take a good look on the way in, it's certainly the world's second greatest national market, and it's a place you'd want to be. That I agree with, but, uh, but it, it has terrible debt problems, terrible problems of uh, lack of, uh, I don't want to use the cliche transparency, but lack, frankly, of, of believable statistics and information on the state of public finances and some private debt questions as well. And, and there, there are a lot of question marks, but that China is important, that it will grow, that it will gradually become more important. Of course it will. But but, but there are many fluctuations and uncertainties, and none of the institutions in China are particularly reliable. So, Karen, let me ask you this as someone who knows media well, a Hollywood superstar, Selma Hayek, talking about the Trump candidacy, said literally, America is not a TV, a reality TV show. Trump running for president makes it seem so to the rest of the world. From a comfortable spot a little bit further north than we are, what is your perspective? Don't ever underestimate the degree to which people in the world, even people who are relatively well disposed to the United States, want to take alarm and always uh, be fearful that something terrible is going to happen and that the country is going to be taken over by extremists and lunatics. Don't ever underestimate the degree to which many foreigners, especially uh, certain types of Europeans, like to pretend that the United States is a terribly vulgar place. And it, at times, now, while Donald Trump is a friend of mine, a good friend and a loyal friend, and I have great liking and admiration for him, at times his conduct is, by the standards of some other nationalities, uh, a bit abrupt and even some might think if it's not portrayed at its best uh, slightly vulgar, but uh, the fact is, uh, he has a perfect right to run for president, and uh, I, I myself don't think he's going to be the next president, but he has, he has every right to run for the office, and the fact that he has generated such a heavy response, I think, indicates that the American public are terribly disillusioned with the fact that they've had 20 years of generally poor government, and they're angry about it, and they're right to be angry about it. So the temptations of people like Donald and Dr. Carson and Ms. Fiorina, who have not held elective office, to make an appeal based on being completely outsiders, untainted by what's going on, is very strong. It is strong indeed, and that, to your point, is why we are seeing the response, or a big part of it anyway. Lord Conrad Black, thank you so much. Delighted to have you with us, joining us there from Toronto.